In this lesson, we are going to study the last of our conic sections, hyperbolas. A hyperbola is the collection of all points in the plane, the difference of whose distances from two fixed points, called the foci, is a constant. The definition says that if we get any point on your hyperbola, the difference of the distance of this point from the first focus and the distance from the second focus, this one is always a constant. Take note of the difference of the definition of a hyperbola with that of an ellipse. For a hyperbola, you get the difference of the distances, whereas for an ellipse, you get the sum of the distances from the two foci. Here are the parts of a hyperbola. First, the transverse axis is the line containing the foci. What is the counterpart of this for ellipse? That would be your major axis. Similarly, the center is the midpoint of the line segment joining the foci. So in this case, this is our center. The conjugate axis is the line through the center and perpendicular to the major axis. The vertices are the two points of intersection of the hyperbola and the transverse axis. These are your two vertices. Let's call this V1 and let's call this V2. Here is an equation of a hyperbola with center at the origin, foci at C0 and negative C0, and vertices at A0 and negative A0. So this is your A. And this is your negative a. We have the equation x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1. And this is the relationship among a, b, and c. Now, look at the difference of this with the ellipse. With our ellipse, we have a squared equals b squared plus c squared, correct? Which means to say that b squared is equal to a squared minus c squared. And for an ellipse, your a is greater than c. However, for a hyperbola, b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. This gets interchanged. And of course, c must be greater than a. So if you look at the hyperbola, take note that your c here, your focus is inside your, this is like the inside region of your hyperbola, hence C is greater than A. Whereas for an ellipse, notice that C is really smaller than A. How do we determine the shape of our hyperbola? The shape of the hyperbola will be determined by the variable appearing here. If x appears first, just like in this case, your parabola is opening sidewards. The vertices will be a units away from the center. This is a, this is a. If y appears first, you're starting with y squared here. That means that your hyperbola is a vertical hyperbola. It's opening upwards and downwards. Take note that whatever is the constant appearing in the denominator of the first term that appears, that will determine your a. For this one, x squared appeared first, so the denominator there will be a squared. Here, y squared appeared first. a squared will be the denominator. It's not the same as with your ellipse. How do you determine what your A is for an ellipse? You just determine which one is bigger. If you look at our hyperbola, how do we determine the opening of this graph? That will be determined by its asymptotes. So for example, we have y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared is equal to 1. What kind of hyperbola is this? It starts with y, so therefore it's a vertical hyperbola. This is a hyperbola with vertex at 0a and 0, negative a. So that will be a part of your hyperbola. And we know that it's going to be opening upward here and opening downwards here. What is the relevance of this b here? Now, it turns out that this b will determine the opening of your hyperbola. 
suppose that this is your B and this is negative B. This is your conjugate axis and this is your transverse axis. This is not a point on your hyperbola, right? Because it's opening upwards and downwards here. However, these four points here will determine a rectangle and you call it the auxiliary rectangle. How does it work? You just form line segment containing these four points here. You now get the diagonal of this auxiliary rectangle. The diagonals here will be the oblique asymptote of your hyperbola. That is, your parabola will get closer and closer to these two lines over here. Something like that. Let us consider this line over here. It passes through the origin. So that's 0, 0. And what is the slope? From here to here, what do you do? You go up by A units and then you go to the right by B units. So therefore, our slope is rise over run is A over B. So therefore, what's the equation of this line? This is Y equals A over BX. Take note, your point is 0, 0. I'm using the point slope form. What is the equation of this line? Take note that this is exactly the same as this one except that it is decreasing. Thus, therefore, the slope is negative. This is the line y equals negative a over bx. What about if our hyperbola starts with x squared? Since it starts with x squared, our transverse axis is the x-axis. So our A is here. And we just know that I hyperbola is opening sidewards. From our conjugate axis, you draw B units from the center. This is our center. So let's say that this is B and this is negative B. We then draw our auxiliary rectangle determined by this four points. Again, we form the diagonal. Our hyperbola opens sidewards and this will now be the oblique asymptotes. That is your hyperbola. What will be the equation of this line? Just like what we did earlier, we get two points on this line. It contains the point 0, 0, and what is the slope? Rise of B and run of A. So therefore, this line here is Y equals B over AX. And for this one, this is Y equals negative B over AX. And this is the summary of what we have discussed. Now, how do we remember this? You always use the constant under y for the slope. You start with that constant. So in this case, a over b, whereas in this case, the constant under the variable y here is b. So that's why it's b over a. So for example, let us find the asymptotes of the following. x squared over 16 minus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. What will be the asymptote here? The constant under your variable y, you get the square root of that. So that's 2 over the constant under the variable x for x. So therefore, we get y is equal to x over 2. What about for this one? We have to write this first in standard form. So we have to divide both sides by 4 so that the other side will be equal to 1. We get y squared over 4 minus x squared is equal to 1. What will be the asymptotes? We get y is equal to, get the constant under the variable y, but get its square root. That's 2 over 1 
x. So that's y equals plus or minus 2x. Here is an example. Identify the center transverse axis foci and vertices of the following hyperbola and graph it. First, let us determine our a, b, and c. Remember that our a is the constant appearing in the first term. So in this case, our a squared is equal to 16. This is your b squared. And what is c squared? Recall that for a hyperbola, b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. c is greater than a. So therefore, our c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Recall that for ellipse, what do we do when we're getting c squared? We're subtracting a squared minus b squared. But this time for a hyperbola, we are adding c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So this is 16 plus 4, you get 20. Therefore, get that a is 4, b is 2, and c is equal to 2 square root of 5. We are now ready to sketch the graph of our hyperbola. What kind of hyperbola do we have? It starts with x, so therefore, our hyperbola opens sidewards. Our transverse axis is your x-axis, and of course, this is your conjugate axis. Your a will appear here. It will be 4 units away from the center. This is a point on your hyperbola. And then for your conjugate axis, we go 2 units up. And let us form our auxiliary rectangle. Next, let us get the asymptotes. This one and this one. Our hyperbola opens sidewards. So it's like that. Let us now identify the different parts. Our center, of course, is 0, 0. Let's determine our foci. Our C is 2 square root of 5. So therefore, from the center, you locate 2 square root of 5 units along the transverse axis. Recall that for a hyperbola, your C is greater than A. So 2 square root of 5 is here. And here is negative 2 square root of 5. So therefore, our foci are the points 2 square root of 5, 0. And negative 2 square root of 5, 0. Our transverse axis is the x-axis. And of course, the vertices are the points negative 4, 0. And 4, 0. Next, let us also sketch the graph of this equation. This is the same ellipse that we obtained earlier. This is equivalent to y squared over 4 minus x squared is equal to 1. Of course, our center here is the origin. Our a squared is 4. Our b squared is 1. And c squared is a squared plus b squared. So that's 5. Our transverse axis is the y-axis because the hyperbola starts with y. This is transverse and this is your conjugate axis. So going back to our constants a, b, c, we get here that a is equal to 2, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to square root of 5. Let us locate our vertices. Our vertex is lying along our transverse axis and it's a units away from the center. So this is 2. This is negative 2. This is your vertex. And then for your auxiliary rectangle, we go 1 unit along the conjugate axis. So this is 1. This is negative 1. This is our auxiliary rectangle. Let us draw the diagonals. 
our vertices are here along the transverse axis, so it's opening upwards. The graph should approach this oblique line here. Suppose that our hyperbola has center at HK, so again, just like what we did with the three other conic sections, this will just mean that the hyperbola will be translated H units horizontally and K units vertically. Hence, this equation will now become X minus H squared over A squared minus Y minus K squared over B squared and your y squared over a squared will now become y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared. What will happen to our asymptotes here? Now, for case 1, your asymptote here originally was y equals plus or minus the constant under y is b so that's b over a x for this one your asymptote was y equals plus or minus a over b times x if your center is at hk this one will also have a translation h units horizontally and k units vertically so therefore this will become y minus k is equal to b over a times x minus h. This equation here will become y minus k is equal to a over b times x minus h. Take note that if the center is at hk, the distances between the vertices and the foci will still be the same. If you have a vertical hyperbola, the vertex will still be A units away from the center. Same goes with this one. If you have a horizontal hyperbola, your foci will still be C units away from the center. This is C and C, and similarly here, let us use what we have learned in sketching the graph of this ellipse. First, let us identify our center. Our center is the point 1, 3. Your A squared is the first constant that appears here in your denominator. A squared is 9 b squared is 4, and c squared is a squared plus b squared, 13. Hence, your a is 3, your b is 2, and your c is square root of 13. We are now ready to sketch the graph, starting with our center of 1, 3. What kind of hyperbola do we have? Since it starts with the variable y, our hyperbola is a vertical hyperbola. Hence, we have a vertical transverse axis. It passes through the center. This is your conjugate axis. Our vertex is 3 units away from the center along the transverse axis. So this is going to be 6. That's 3 plus 3, that's 6, and then 3 minus 3, that's going to be 0. To determine the opening of our hyperbola, let us get our auxiliary rectangle. Our B is equal to 2, so we get 2 units from the center. So this is 1 plus 2, so this is 3. 1 minus 2, we will end up at negative 1. Let us now form our auxiliary rectangle. It has to pass through these four points here. And we will now draw our diagonals. This will be the asymptotes. Take note that your asymptotes will always pass through the center of your hyperbola. We now draw our hyperbola now that we have the asymptotes. 
asymptotes, it will approach the oblique asymptotes. Let us complete what we were asked to determine. We already have the center. Our transverse axis is x equals 1. Let us determine our foci. Our C is square root of 13. So from the center, we go up by square root of 13. Take note that this one here is 3. So it's 3 plus square root of 13. Let's say this one. And for this one, we have 3 minus square root of 13. Say that point. Therefore, our foci are 1, 3 plus square root of 13, this point, and this point. 1, 3 minus square root of 13. For our asymptotes, what is the equation? We have y minus k. So this is 3 is equal to the slope. What is our slope? It's just 3 over 2. We are looking at the constant under y. Get its square root. So that's 3 over 2 times x minus h, which in this case is 1. This is plus or minus. You can leave your answer like that. And of course, for our vertices, our vertices are the points 1, 6, and 1, 0. Here is the general form of the equation of a hyperbola. Take note that the only difference of the equation of a hyperbola with that of an ellipse is that the sign of the coefficients of x squared and y squared will always be different. One will be positive and one will be negative. If we are given the general equation of a hyperbola, the technique is still to use completing the square in order to transform it into its standard form so that we can determine our center and the values of a, B, and C. Let us sketch the following hyperbola. We know that this is a hyperbola because you have x squared and you have y squared here and they have coefficients with different signs. So just like before, when we were discussing circles, ellipse, and parabolas, we collect all the terms with the x. Let us factor out the coefficient of x squared and y squared. Here we will factor out minus 4. So this becomes y squared minus 12y. We now complete the square by adding 4 here and adding 12 divided by 2 is 6 squared. So that's... 36. Therefore, we add 9 times 4 and then 36 times negative 4. So that's minus 144. This becomes 9 times quantity x plus 2 squared minus 4 times. This is y minus 6 squared is equal to 72 plus 36 minus 144 is negative 36. To turn this into positive 1, we just divide both sides by negative 36. So therefore, this will become negative of x plus 2 squared over 4 plus y minus 6 squared over 9 is equal to positive 1. Now we write this as y minus 6 squared all over 9 minus x plus 2 squared over 4 is equal to 1. This is now in standard form. Let us identify our center. Our center is negative 2, 6. This is our a squared. This is our b squared. Our c squared is a squared plus b squared, 13. 
Hence, A is 3, B is 2, and C is square root of 13. Let us now sketch the graph. We start with our center, negative 2, 6. Let's say that this is negative 2, 6. Let's draw our transverse axis and conjugate axis. We start with the variable y, so therefore, we have a vertical hyperbola. This is our transverse axis, and this is our conjugate axis. Our vertex is 3 units away from the center, and then it's lying along our transverse axis. So that's 6 plus 3. This is 9. This is vertex 1, and then 6 minus 3. This is 3. This is your vertex 2. For our auxiliary rectangle, we need the value of B. So we go 2 units to the left and right of the center. So this becomes 0. And this is at negative 4. I'm putting... An X mark there to indicate that it's not part of our hyperbola. We just need it as a guide for our auxiliary rectangle. This is our auxiliary rectangle. Here are the diagonals. Therefore, our hyperbola is opening like this. Let us identify the parts for our transverse axis. It's the vertical line, x equals negative 2. What will be our foci? So starting from the center, we go up by square root of 13 because our c is square root of 13. The y-coordinate here is 6, so therefore the y-coordinate of your foci is 6 plus square root of 13. And we go down by square root of 13. So let's say that. That is this point. So this is 6 minus square root of 13. So these two are our foci. What are those points? It's negative 2, 6 plus square root of 13. And negative 2, 6 minus square root of 13. What about our asymptotes? Its form is y minus k. Our k is 6. What is the slope of our asymptote? We look at the constant under y and then get the square root of that. So that's 3 over 2 times x minus h. So that's x plus 2. So we get plus or minus. And lastly, for our vertices, our vertices are... Negative 2, 9, and negative 2, 3. Here is our last example. Again, we have here a hyperbola because we have x squared minus 3y squared here. Collect all the terms involving x. All the constants on the other side. The coefficient of x squared is already 1, so that's okay. The coefficient of y squared is negative 3, but there are no y terms. We are now ready to complete the square. For this 2, we add 8 divided by 2, 4 squared. Then this one is already okay. So therefore, we add 16. This can be factored as x minus 4 squared minus 3y squared is equal to 0. If you get a 0 on the right-hand side, what you do is you separate your variables x and y. So we get x minus 4 squared is equal to 3y squared. And let us solve for y. So we get y squared is equal to x minus 4 squared all over 3. This would mean that y is equal to the square root of this one. So that's plus or minus x minus 4 all over square root of 3. What is the graph of this one? This is just a line passing through our 
center 4, 0. Supposedly, the center of this hyperbola is 4, 0, right? So, this is 4, 0. Its slope is plus or minus 1 over square root of 3. So, of course, I cannot graph that manually. Let's. I will just draw two lines here. Passing through our center. And this one is y equals x minus 4 over square root of 3. And the other one is y equals negative of x minus 4 all over square root of 3. So in general, if you get something of this form, it's like the equation of a hyperbola, but this side is equal to 0. What you will get there are the lines passing through the center HK. And what will be the slopes? The slopes will be B over A. What are those lines? That's Y minus K is equal to plus or minus B over A X minus H. And what are these two lines? These are actually the diagonals of your auxiliary rectangle, correct? Thus, if this happens, you will not end up with the hyperbola. You will just end up with the supposedly asymptotes of your hyperbola. Here are some exercises that you can work on.